Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and today we are going over some paranormal stories. Because trying to be cheerful and stuff is not so easy today. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into this. All right, we'll get to do some more later. Hmm? Oh, that was a weird bit of lag. Let's go. True story that happened to me in Brownsville, Texas. No, I mean, I mean the person who wrote this, not actually myself, but you already knew that. I'm from Brownsville, Texas, and one night I was at my girlfriend's house. We were having a normal evening, watching a movie and relaxed in bed at around 9pm. Since someone else was home, we were surprised when we heard a robotic-like voice coming from outside the window. I checked, but I didn't see anything. This happened twice. Then we heard noises coming from the kitchen. My girlfriend had cats in the house, so we thought it might be, be them and didn't pay much attention. However, the noises continued and they were louder the second time. We jokingly checked the living room and kitchen but found nothing unusual, so we went back to bed. Suddenly, we heard the noises again for the third time, and this time we decided to thoroughly check the entire house. However, we couldn't find anything out of the ordinary. The cats were also missing, as if they were hiding. My girlfriend went back to her room and I followed her. Before entering the room, I had a strange feeling inside to look out into the hallway. It was dark and I couldn't see anything, but suddenly I heard a human whistle. Thinking it was my girlfriend, I started to laugh low. However, when I looked at her, she seemed genuinely terrified and asked me to close the door. I locked it as she requested. We suspected that someone had entered the house, and I was ready to call 911. However, my girlfriend insisted that I shouldn't, and said we decided to run out of the house. I locked the bottom lock of the door from the inside and went straight to my car. I was terrified and shaking, and I wanted to call my dad and ask him to bring a gun. But my girlfriend convinced me not to, instead I called my friends and asked them to come with baseball bats. We waited outside to see if anyone would had come out of the house, but no one did. That's why my friends said we should go inside and confront the burglar with the bats that I brought. However, when I tried to open the door, I realized it was locked. I remembered locking it before leaving. We decided to go to a restaurant and get the keys from my girlfriend's mom. I asked my friends to stay outside and call the police if they saw anyone. When we returned, we positioned ourselves behind the door, ready to open it. I unlocked the bottom lock and turned the knob. But to my surprise and fear, the top knock that required a key to lock was also locked. We didn't have the key when we originally ran out. And this confirmed to me that someone was inside. I unlocked the top lock using the keys we had, and we quickly entered the house. Expecting to find someone inside. However, after searching the entire house and checking all the windows and doors, everything seemed untouched and locked. Since then, my friends and I have been unable to explain what happened that day. The top lock, which needed a key to be locked, was locked when we returned, even though we didn't have the key. Moreover, we still couldn't explain the human whistling sound that my girlfriend and I heard. The whistling had a mocking tone to it. When her mom got home and told her what happened, she told us this morning that she heard a girl laughing loud as frick while the TV was on, and she told her girlfriend, and now Lee's laughing, so laughing so loud, I haven't heard her laugh like that in a while. My girl was not at home that morning, she slept over at a friend. A few months ago, my girlfriend's mother was 
I was preparing to move out of the house. She was doing some final checks and making sure all the doors were locked. However, the next day when she went back to the house, she noticed that the door and the back doors were wide open. This seemed strange to her, so she locked the doors again and turned in the keys. Hmm. A few days later, the realtor who had the keys called my girlfriend's mom and asked if she had entered the house and opened the back doors. She denied it, explaining that she didn't have the keys anymore. The realtor informed her that the Grise, when they went to check the house, the back doors were open, and they had closed and locked them, but when they returned the next day, the doors were wide open once again. Sounds like a really creepy poultry, guys. Ooh, a question about a thing. What was this thing? My mom lives in Southeast Ohio. I mean, that already pretty much ends the story. Why are you surprised? It's Ohio. Okay, let's actually continue. At the top of a hill on, on, country, on a country road. One day, my son, eight at the, at the time, was riding a scooter up and down the road, something he wasn't allowed to do for safety reasons. So this country road has it's on both sides, but they aren't particularly dense on either side and fields, and you tell oh, the crossing splits. So roadside I'd woods from the bigger section and so forth. He suddenly comes running up the hill with the ghost was tear eyed and says he saw something scary in the woods. He's almost inconsolable. He finally gets calmed down when asking what he saw. He says it was kind of like a stick figure but thicker. It was all black and had no facial features. And looked just like the man on the bathroom signs. Of course we went to check he took us to a specific area, pointed out exactly where it was, and even showed us how much taller it was than a dead tree in the area, roughly seven feet tall. He was physically shaking the whole time, he was showing us and talking about it. We told him it was probably white and he'd stay out of the road, but what could have been? Has anyone ever seen anything like this before? Spiritual energy. Ohio is a focus point of weird. Ohio is not a part of normal reality. That's why you can't leave. No, I, I'm not going to waste any more time making fun of Ohio because it's already a bad enough as it is. I mean, honestly, I think that's just a normal day in Ohio. What do you think in the comments? Ohioans in the <laughs> Ohio oh, residents in the chat. Tell me what you think about Ohio. Is this is a normal day. I mean, I think a lot of these stories could just be a normal day in Ohio. Anyway, strange occurrences at old rental. Back in 2013, I was sitting in a trailer that had strange things going on. The faucets would turn off on themselves while I was doing dishes, and the shower would turn off on me too. I turned them back on and act like nothing happened, but it was strange. One time I came home from work late at night and I saw a black figure darker than its running darkness on the living room. It was almost pitch black inside due to the owner light being from the ambient moonlight outside. I thought it was a room so I greeted him and told him he was being funny. When I turned the light on, the room was empty. I have no idea what was going on I, I never felt anything negative. So if anyone had a similar experience or any knowledge of what was going on, I'd like to know. Thanks. So this could have been a uh, ghost with harmless pranks. I know that um, yeah, sometimes in the bathroom, um, stuff that I put on shelves gets knocked off them. Kind of irritating, but it's whatever. <sighs> An entity grabs my legs. Oh, you're in the back rooms? Dang. 
Right. To preface this, I, 29 female, live in a home that was built in the 60s with my mom, 51 female, and remained 62 female, and my husband, 38 male. I'm sorry, you remained? I think you mean secret lover. Anyway, our landlord's father passed away not too long ago, and things have been going on since we had our vet as remodeled. A year ago, small things. I am seeing thrown, hush whispers, heard at any time of day, and a shadow of, the, of a child seen in a room. In a few rooms. Last month, we had the master bathroom remodeled as it was causing structural damage to the house, and things have been crazy since. The first night after the remodel, I could smell someone smoking right in the living room. Granted, our roommate ate smokes outside and doesn't and ever smoke in the house. The smoke smell would follow me to the, into the bedroom. It would feel like someone was standing over, just watching, is constantly blowing cigarette smoke into my face day and night. Then led into me not being able to walk into my bath. That's why we're not letting the air know I was coming in. Because if you don't, whatever is in there gets so angry, the air gets heavy. That's a bit ridiculous. The day I was grabbed, it was roughly 4 or 5 a.m. since I worked the night shift and was trying to go to bed. I was laying next to my husband when I felt a rope or tail wrap around my left knee. Then it switched to my right. I was so scared I ended up, up smudging... The whole home, salting the doorway is in and out of the house, putting salt on the three mirrors in the bathroom. I don't have a spirit board or anything like that to communicate with the other side, and I don't want to. There's still hushed conversations happening, but I don't smell smoke anymore, and nothing has tried to touch me since. Good, good. The salt worked then. Well, I'm guessing that the hushed whispers are not demonic. Oh, this seems a southern accent. Skinwalker sighting. I've been wanting to speak about this for a while. This happened in around April 2018 while I was staying at my aunt's apartment in Aurora, Colorado. Her apartment was located on the second top floor behind a high school field. It was around 2 to 3 in the morning and I got up to use the restroom which I decided to... When I decided to stop by the kitchen and look out the window. To my surprise, I came across what I can only imagine as a skinwalker. It was pale and had glowing eyes along with spider-like limbs. It was digging into the ground and I was too shocked in a moment to think about recording. It's been five years since and I can't stop thinking about it. Has anybody ever come across this or does anyone have... Uh, any additional information about this? I'd love to know, please. April 2018. Well, it's June 2023, so... I think that's about five years, yeah. Dang, 2018 was five years ago? I've been touched three times now. Just laying in just lying in bed with my husband, and he always falls asleep way before me. I usually sit up and read on my phone or whatever. Still in bed though. The first time I was touched, I was like I was lying on my right side just scrolling through Reddit when I felt a hand touch my left hip area. It freaked me out and I immediately put my hand in there as a kind of reaction. Nothing was there. Second time it happened again on the upper leg. Same deal. The third time I thought I was actually having a nightmare about being touched. I woke up because I felt someone touch my stomach. The third time could have been a dream, but I know 100% the other two times it happened, I was fully awake. Not even sleepy. We have lived in this house almost two years. As for his owner, or if it's haunted in a joking manner, he said, Nah, this house isn't. And for my last one was, then proceeded to tell me something about his previous home. I'm not sure why thing would happen now and not before. I hear a crazy. These stuff happened at night in my house. We had three stories in our our bedroom store upstairs. I'll hear things crashing and bumping at all hours, but we we have three cats that live in the basement. We also come up to the second floor or to, to play. I always assume and want to assume it's them playing. It's just strange how it suddenly happened. I don't feel scared or creeped out in my house though. <sighs> Dang. 
Why are you telling me this like 20 years later? Anyway. Waking precognitive dream or vision. The vision or waking dream or whatever you want to call it happened in the summer of 2004. As I said, that was 20 years ago. This person waited like two whole decades. Anyway. I was driving home from work on a route I could drive with my eyes closed as I was so used to it. When my mind began to wander, I saw me and my husband going to my stepdaughter's room and finding her hanging in the closet. I was a paramedic at the time, so I saw myself performing each step involved in beginning the process of CPR. My husband was hysterical. I knew that no one had been notified. I just kept focusing on performing CPR, thinking about uh, the crew who was going to get that call. I then stopped out, and I felt awful for thinking such a horrible thing about her life. Like I had fantasized about it happening and wanted on it to become real. No way did I feel that way. It, almost exactly a year later, it came true. All of it. We went to check on her and noticed her CD player was skipping and she wasn't fixing it. We went in her room and ultimately found her hanging in her closet. My now ex, ex-husband ex begged me to save her, so I took a deep breath, prior mouth open, and began CPR. As I performed CPR, another person who happened to show up right as I was running downstairs for the phone I actually ended up being the one to call who was talking to 911, relaying everything I told her to relay. We never spent another night at an apartment. We stayed in the same complex, but we stayed with family while we were waiting for them to get our new apartment ready for us. This was... Not sure where they're from, so this was either March 9, 2005 or September 3rd, 2005. I still wonder if there have been any paranormal experiences is in that room. I had a visitation and dream a couple of weeks later that was really sweet. I felt awful for having thought it, then when it came it true I felt even worse. It's not the only prophetic experience I've had though. Ah. <sighs> Hmm. Okay, so some more stuff that we can read. <sighs> Experience unexplained. Hunting. What the? Why'd you do that? And explained. That's a question I kind of. Guess we can go over the Shadow Man again. You don't really see much about Shadow O oh, oh people, do you? And I guess we can just throw in the last story being um This. Now, let's go ahead and read these, and then we are probably going to be done for the video. A Pass Down of Powers So my grandma, deceased, was always super connected to spirits, and she did so by dream. She would dream and spirits would talk to her. She would constantly be touched by spirits, 
and they would get attached to her, following my family everywhere, even if she, if they moved houses. And my mother was has plenty of good stories. I don't know if my grandma would be a medium. Either way, to give my point since a young age, I've always seen things in my dreams, and I've always been different when it comes to spiritual stuff. So it bothered me, and if anything, I've, exp I've embraced my experiences. Recently, I've been uh, having a lot more, a lot of experiences, such as seeing a, a lot of shadow of figures. Felt things watching me, and have even had things move around my ha house now. I'm wondering if it's possible that I picked up my grandma's strange abilities, or if this is all just, or if this is all me. Yes, I'm a 90-year-old male. Yeah, that was kind of irrelevant anyway. Previous thing to ever happen to me. I had some old Adidas shoes, and I was about to sell them on an app like Facebook Marketplace. It was like Wednesday. I planned to be with a buyer Saturday. Friday night, I had a dream where I was about to meet that guy, and I suddenly teleported to my grandma's house right when I was about to meet that guy. And I had to make an excuse for that because the guy wouldn't believe that I just got teleported a few days away. And I saw in my dream that my mother had some problems and we had to rush her to the hospital and we could not meet that day. I don't remember any more of that dream than that, but when I woke up, I realized it wasn't real. It didn't mean nothing to me and I just went along with my dad and called the guy to meet him as we planned. Then when he, pick when he picked up the phone, he literally told me that we could not meet the day. That day because his mother got some problems and he had to rush her to the hospital. I dreamt exactly what he told me and it really even messed my head up because what I said in my dream happened to his mother just like I predicted. And for me, that's my creepiest experience ever and my glitch in the matrix. I hope you guys got my idea. English is my second language. Believe me, you did better in English than most people did. Ooh, including me. I think there's something weird with the house I just moved into. Well, I moved in today. I had only been in the house a single time before, or and loved it. But moving in, I had sort of a weird feeling, but I just associated it with the anxiety that comes with change. But feelings sort of grew as my day went on, but not too bad. I ended up taking a nap and woke up within the first five minutes to look over my shoulder due to maybe anxiety? Keep me alert or something. New space, who knows. Anyway, I did end up going to sleep and had this this dream. And I was in a new in the, a new house and I was waking up from a nap. There's a dream and I grab my home because it's dark. And I go to use a flashlight. I'm really scared of dark, but only one alone. But the flashlight won't work, so I go to flip the light switch in my room and it doesn't work. Oh, I hate those dreams. I've had that happen a lot. So I go to the kitchen and use the light switch, and and that one doesn't work. I run outside, and all of a sudden it's day, and I see my cats, my protectors. I have deep love for them. I have deep love for them, and I walk up to them. It's not them. It's just similar-looking cats. And then I turn and see, you know, but when I get to them, it's a s freaking cars. Anyway. Or was that? It's the same thing, similar looking, but not them. Now here's where it gets weirder. I wake up from the nap and get in the bath. While laying there, I look up and see a pentagram on the door frame. Then I'm laying with my partner after my bath, and he knows one on the door frame to the bedroom, too. I can't post a pic, be I can post a pic if anyone's interested or even ends up seeing this. I'll also update if anything else is found. And but fingers crossed that there won't be. Anyway, let me know about the door frame thing. Super interested. <sighs> what happened to me and my sister on the first day of the dead? So last year, on Day of the Dead, me and my sister were preparing in the altar, and it was maybe around midnight, and the altar wasn't finished, but me and my sister got sleepy, so my sister went to the bathroom to brush her teeth and stuff, and I stayed in the living room. I was on my phone reading a comic when I heard a like, small tapping in the kitchen, and it kind of freaked me out, so I was away from the kitchen, and I remember everything being dark, so I started out my phone and flashlight, but it didn't really help. 
Then my sister came out of the bathroom and we went to sleep. But my sister's point of view, I was holding my phone with the flashlight on. When the lights at run, she found funny at first, but then she no it's me staring at the wall with the blank air and it scared and freaked her out. But then I stepped out and went to the hallway. I walked to my bedroom normally, but I don't didn't remember looking at the wall. All I remember is her coming out of the bathroom and her walking me to my room. I was all the animals were acting weird that night. That is very odd. Can anyone help explain this? I was on the phone up to my boyfriend and at about 2 a.m. and he heard a sound. It sounded like a, this is the best way to describe it, wah 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 sound, right? Above my house. Ever since then, I heard a man like scream in the forest area of my backyard. I saw a bird looking creature not fly but float away last night. Yay. Tonight, but 10 minutes ago. My dog knows it and was staring at it and it floated away once it saw me. What is going on? Does anyone have a, have a logical explanation for this? I don't know. Are you in Ohio? That's my best explanation for any weird things going on. No, I'm kidding. Anyway. He looked at me. Okay, so to, to give some context, me and my family moved into a new apartment. Our old apartment was haunted. I would constantly have sleep paralysis and hear footsteps coming from the storage unit above us, and it, it was always stopped in my room. When we moved, I thought that I could, you know, kind of be free from this paranormal shit, but I think it followed me. Okay, so the main story, last summer, around 2 a.m., I got up to use the restroom. I left my bedroom door open, and so I could see the light from my room after I got out of the bathroom. And I turned off the light, and I was about to go back to my room. When I saw a tall, oh, black shadow man, it was picking its head out of my room with its long and pointy finger on the wall. I didn't know what to do. I just froze and stood there looking at it. Obviously, you punched the you freaker since you can actually move now. It was breathing hard, right, and what felt like hours, it finally moved. It moved something, but I couldn't quite hear what it said. It dragged its fingers along my wall and slowly went back into my room. I've seen shadow people a lot of my life. I've seen ghosts and all that paranormal stuff, but they've never interacted with me. Please tell me what to do. Thank you. Beat it up. Beat up ghosts. It's always the best idea. Beat the crap out of ghosts. You totally won't make things worse for yourself. You will. Don't actually listen to what I say. My ideas are never correct. So I'm going to share one of my scariest childhood experiences. I woke up with this thing standing over me. I couldn't see it, but I could see its shadow. I could feel it standing over me, and I could feel it touching my back with its long fingernails. Its shadow looked huge, like fight I feet wide, I don't know. It just stood there with, until the morning. Please comment if you know or think you know what it is. A spooky shadow. Yep, that's what it is. So, Shadow Man threw the mirror. It just threw a mirror at you? Dang. I was brushing my hair. When I looked left of the mirror, there was a shadow all the way on the curve of the bed standing up. As I continued to watch it, it, it started moving from one corner to the next. No moving lights, no window curtain. Everything's open. Impossible for our car lights to get in. I live next to a brick building. The street view is blocked. I was not scared oddly enough. I was just watching and you know, walk behind the bed. Anyone else have this? And finally, sleep paralysis experience from November 2021. Whew. I've had sleep paralysis time to time throughout my life. I had one in 2016 where I first heard a creepy noise in a dream that led to an experience where I felt like I was being poked. In 2017, I had a non paralysis experience where I thought I saw my brother standing beside the bed tightly wrapped in his blanket. I had to ask what he was doing multiple times. It was disappeared after I heard my brother being to my left. 
However, in November of 2021, I had an experience that is one of my favorite to share. Many people have stopped sleep paralysis by calling on Jesus. I had a chance to do this in one of my more recent ones. Oh. I'd call for Satan. I actually wouldn't call for anyone. I, I don't believe in crap. Anyway. Mine started with a dream. In a dream, I was staying outside at night on the porch. The sky was covered in a very thick, dark... Was covered in very thick, dark clouds. Wow, I read that wrong. However, there was nothing in the clouds but the neon blue lights coming from it. The sky was pretty surreal in a beautiful way. After that, I remember what... I remember waking into sleep paralysis, but in the experience, I was in bed in the opposite direction. I felt a terrifying, wavy dread upon me during the sleep paralysis and couldn't move. Suddenly, I felt an arm reach over me, pitting me down, and I had a dreadful feeling of horror. Next, I remembered how some of my favorite book authors teach that the imagination can help you see in the spirit, like a bridge. One of those books I is How to See in the Spirit by Michael Van Lyman. Why do some real life books sound like a like freaking off brand and the TV books? I don't know, maybe it's just me. Thought it occurred to me to use my imagination to focus and meditate on Jesus. So I began to focus on him, and suddenly I believe I saw what looked like a star in the night sky, a pinprick of light very high above me. Then I awoke feeling relieved. Other times I've had sleep paralysis, I would sometimes automatically try speaking in tongues. My belief that as a charismatic Christian, speaking in tongues is a spirit to spirit communication with God. That also helped me gain control. Oh, that got religious. Oh well. That was some people's paranormal experiences. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And also, remember, it is still Pride Month. I hope you all have a wonderful June. I'm recording this on the 4th, but it's going to come out a few days later. I don't know when, but it will come out. Don't worry. Until then, I will be seeing you. When will I be seeing you? Oh yeah, tomorrow. Goodbye!